Hey guys, it's Jesse Alton, aka Mr. Metaverse, and today I'll be traveling to DC. Uh, I'm actually gonna be speaking on a panel with the Black Chamber of Commerce. Really excited about this. Uh, I was actually referred by my partner Seema, and I get to be on a panel with my good friend Julius. Uh, so really looking forward to the day and wanna take the camera along to see if I can get some good content while we're in DC uh, and maybe whatever comes to mind before and after the chat. Uh, today's panel is gonna be about the future trends in technology for business. This is gonna apply to startups, government contractors, Fortune 100 companies alike. So really seems like it's in line with kind of the content that I've been pushing out with the uh, Metaverse Interop show. And uh, yeah, overall, I'll give you another one of those behind the scenes sneak peeks into the day in my life and stay tuned. All right, so I actually just got to DC and uh, can't lie, I feel like a total goober carrying this camera, uh, but I'm gonna make it work doing it for the vlog. Uh, this is a good part of town. It's kind of a good place to come out and eat. Um, I've never been to the venue that I'm going to, but again, I'm pretty pumped to see my friend Julius and talk about the metaverse. Stay tuned. problem solving. So the issue that I see a lot of businesses have is that they build really cool technologies, but they're not solving a problem. If you don't solve a problem, you don't have any problems. Say it again. Slow down so they can hear. Oh, sure. Come I'm probably, the closer. I'm probably the go. only woman on the planet that has a Pulitzer Prize in virtual reality. Woo! Um, I say that because a lot of times when we go to spaces, they say they can't find us. So I always try to put that out there. Um, what I do through my company, very simply, is help people get into the metaverse, actually use Web3 uh, for the future. A lot of us are afraid of it and want to tell you, don't be afraid of it, because I wasn't afraid of it in 2016 when I didn't know anything. But my goal is to bring as many of us as possible. So you can find me on LinkedIn. That's my playground. Um, Bianca G. Jackson and Instagram. I think I just locked it down. Am I audible in the back? Okay, great. Um, we're the Caldwells, Courtney and Dr. Ty, originally from Dallas, Texas, where we firmly believe that the bigger the hair, the closer to God. Um, <laughs> but now we've relocated to Buffalo, New York, the Bills. Go Bills! Um, Oh, wow. Oh, it's okay. You should have said the Eagles. <laughs> um, and we relocated to Buffalo by way of the 43 North Startup Competition. It's like the world's largest shark tank. And so they invest $5 million a year in startups and then ask you to relocate to the city for 12 months. We've been there for more than 12 months and, and we just believe that you go where you're celebrated. And they've been really, really good to us in our business. We are also the co-founders of a mobile app called Shear Share, like as in a pair of cutting shears. It's the first mobile app that connects salon and barbershop owners to individual stylists to fill their empty salon space by the day. People affectionately refer to us as Hair b, &B and that's exactly what we are. But we have listings across 900 cities, some amazing investors um, by the likes of Mark Cuban, CK, founder of AOL, some NBA, NFL. We're co-founder of Shear Share. So my career started in barber, and you know we're talking community, we're talking, we're talking business, we're talking building. And when I was a celebrity stylist and a celebrity barber, you know I think one of the things that people don't understand is how you really make yourself. And so to become the CEO of a tech startup, but first being a business owner, community was 
was where I started. You know, you have to really, really understand that the nucleus of starting a business is the people that you're connected to. That's it. Let's go. Hey, good, good, it's good afternoon. It is. Good afternoon. I am Roman Sudan Montego. Uh, did y'all know that one in six kids don't graduate from high school? Still? And with the COVID-19 pandemic, the gap widened. And then that one in three, that's 33% black and brown boys fall through the crack. And we wonder why we still got so much violence. Right? Now, the crazy part, how many educators in the room? Awesome. Now, they know all this information, and they're fighting the, the constant war, because it's a war. A battle is ends, right? A battle goes from here to here, but a war continues on. It just ask our government, because we're spending tax dollars right now in all these wars we've been in. But you get my point that the war literacy does not stop. So in my- All right, I'm Joshua Mundy. I'm CEO, co-founder of Pivot Technology School. We're a tech workforce development company. We work with Fortune 500 companies to upscale their workforce, as well as we get individuals looking to pivot into, uh, into tech uh, in the areas of data analytics, cybersecurity, and software development. So Than any other ethnicity. And so it makes sense for us to take advantage of what we have built um, and be able to provide that income, and talk about generational wealth, and provide that back into our families and into our communities. Um, Overall, Microsoft Cloud Partner Program, there are programs such as the Fast Track Program, ISV Success Program, um, and even like Microsoft for Startups. And, you know, not necessarily all of these things provide the necessary same type of resources, but they all lead back to the cloud. So can you give me one thing that you've done uh, using technology that has accelerated, that's grown your business, uh, that's impacted your business? Uh, because, again, we're here to be mystified and increase uh, uh, um, a confidence in using technology because again, uh, we are on the outside. Uh, on a good day, black community is eight years behind in technology compared to the rest of the world. In tech, so an MVP or what you would simply just know as a prototype. A lot of times people spend so much time trying to build out the whole thing and they get so demotivated because all these barriers come up. Whereas if you can just think about the quickest, dirtiest thing that you could just push out to the market tomorrow to get feedback, mm -hmm. then you know where to start, what is working and what's not. Coming from the barbershop, the salon, being an entrepreneur, you know, I was always used to giving people my cell number. But now that I run a, a whole engineering team, I run a sales team, you know, when I go out to places like this, people don't just want your number, that's too personal. So you need to have uh, a connection to your email. Make yourself legit. People want to know how they can communicate with you. Also, LinkedIn. There have to be ways that people can communicate, know that you're legit. I was listening to the gentleman talk about Microsoft. Well, today, we raised uh, 5.2, uh, going through another funding round right now. Uh, we won every pitch competition yeah. that we've been in. Google for Startups, um, Royale, uh, Capital Factory, everyone that we've... Um, we did a low-tech way um, of you know, leveraging technology uh, for solving our own problem. And that was, by the time Ty I said, wait a minute, this started to feel like a full-time job, we were sitting down at Chipotle, and he pulled out a napkin, and he said, okay, we were serious about this, Courtney. Like, what would that app even need to look like? So thankfully, we had those three years of historical data in order to build out our prototype, right, or our MVP, your minimally viable product. We still have that Chipotle napkin at home today with handwriting. And every string of the share share app. I know. I love it. Um, so I hear I hear some wonderful talk about MVP, minimal viable product. There's only one guy on this panel who's probably used it better than all y'all. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm telling you, the video game industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, but there are less than two percent of black content creators. So what did I do? I don't have I have access to a lot of developers, but my team is super busy building immersive content from other, from, from our major contracts, the, the people that pay in all our bills. So when I needed to build my Ocean Bowl games, I knew I had developers on, 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 on shore here, but I had to go to Fiverr, I had to go to Upwork, I had to go to all these like different that. channels to look to get resources to build the new District E Esports Arena. I bet you're wondering what's Esports. Well, if you do competitive gaming, it's called Esports. Your kids right now can go right up the block to Laurel, Maryland and get into a Smash Brothers tournament and make 5K. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm using the gaming industry to inspire them to get STEM careers, but at the same time, I'm tapping in and I'm being a true maker and doer. Did I get that? Technologies that have changed the game for us. One is HubSpot. 
So HubSpot is an automation tool that does everything for us. So we have oh, about 500 applications coming in. So, so what it does is that, so when people put in the application, it sends an email to them. And then if they don't respond, it responds back with another email. Then it'll uh, it, uh, remind us to give them a call. So it's like, it acts as an employee until it's time to reach the employee to reach them. So, and then another one is uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so LinkedIn is a game changer. I and afterwards, I did get the chance to speak on a really powerful panel. Uh, I just couldn't film myself up there. <laughs> Good for travel, especially with this lens right here. Yeah, I like this. The lens it has is cheap. It's only like a hundred dollar lens, I think, maybe two hundred. If, uh, if you hook up your Bluetooth to this, then you'll be able to uh, control it. Yeah. Here, yeah. 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 Oh, almost perfect. Hey, that. Everybody else. I took the microphone off. I also got extremely nervous again about the camera, uh, but I forced myself to take it in this time. Last time I bailed. <laughs> uh, last time I went to an event that I was excited to do one of these little vlogs at, I bailed on bringing the camera inside. going to see my buddy James McCoy. He is the uh, founder of a little startup called Cutline, a uh, metaverse startup. And they're working on a metaverse as a service offering, um, actually going out to see James because a friend of theirs is filming a music video. So it uh, should be pretty interesting. All right, uh, I think I'm here. We're gonna find out. There we go. We made it. This is James. <laughs> <laughs> is this our first time hanging out in real life? Yeah, this is our first time hanging out in real wow, life. Wow, I feel like I've known you forever. <laughs> Tell me about the project, dude. So we're doing a Maverick concert with a solo trio. Okay. Um, and it's Safe NFT, a break, and Brick Rose Exchange. Cool. So it's a collaborative project. Um, just kind of taking a break to the metaverse. So yeah. Super excited about that. All right, I uh, can't lie, I got really uncomfortable, so um, that's pretty normal for me, but <laughs> I did not want to carry a camera around when there's professionals with cameras. I know it can trigger them, and um, so I just opted not to. Yeah, but it's a great event. There's really good people in there, and... Yeah, I, I made myself bring it in. I pulled it out when I felt like it was appropriate. I just, I don't wanna like step on the toes of like professional photographers who were hired to come to the event to film. Like there's nothing more tacky like when you go to a wedding than 
when the photographer can't get a good photo because all the guests are standing in the aisle with their phones out, you know, like, so maybe I'm just being hypercritical of myself or overcautious, but I try to err on the side of respecting, you know, artists, people who are filming, people who create any type of content, whether they were contracted to do or not, they have their artistic integrity. And so I didn't get as much footage as I wanted, but uh, anyways, this event was amazing. I'm definitely not surprised. I mean, Julius is so well connected and everyone here that I met was like, yeah, I've known Julius for so long. And I'm like, <laughs> so really glad that he's on my team too. <laughs> um, but overall, I feel like this was well worth it. I met some really great people that I'm excited to help get plugged in the metaverse. And <sighs> yeah, this was worth it, so. And yeah, huge thanks to the Greater Washington Black Chamber of Commerce for having me today. I, I felt so honored to have been on that panel with such amazing co-panelists. Uh, definitely will be coming back.